Today on BRS TV, we're going to start a highly requested series for newer reefers just starting the hobby who want to spend a reasonable amount of time and money setting the tank up. In this first episode, we're going to set up a smaller sized, affordable, and most importantly, easy to take care of tank. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week, inside of six minutes, we're going to set up a new tank for less than 500 bucks in gear. We'll have it set up in less than a couple of hours and show you a maintenance schedule that takes less than 30 minutes a couple times a month. The kit we put together includes a 16 gallon Nuvo aquarium. These tanks are super easy to set up, attractive, and can be put basically anywhere. In fact, this package also doubles as an excellent way to bring your hobby to the office. The kit includes a heater, sand, rock, salt mix, a tool to measure salt, fish food, glass cleaner, and a bottle of bacteria to get the filtration started. First step is to find a nice spot for the tank, which is level, can hold a couple hundred pounds like a countertop, sturdy cabinet, a table. Keep in mind, whatever you put it on is likely to get wet occasionally. It is recommended not to put it in a spot where the tank will sit in direct sunlight. Next, add your rock. Try and stack it in a way that keeps the rock a few inches from the sides and top as well as stable. Pour in the sand and spread it around the base of the rock. So we added 15 gallons of water to this brute trash can. It's probably the most popular type of mixing container. Mixing the water is super easy. You just add the salt to the water and look through this tool called a refractometer to measure the salinity. The scale inside measures the salt in parts per thousand or specific gravity. More or less just dissolve the salt, add a few drops of water to the lens, close, wait 20 seconds or so, and look through the eyepiece. It should read 35 parts per thousand or 1.026. 15 gallons of water should take around seven or so cups of salt. Unlike the bioessay version, the standard version of Crystal Seas Marine Mix contains a dechlorinator, so you don't need to be concerned about the chlorine in your tap water if you're using the standard mix. While you're waiting for the salt to dissolve, take a moment and check all the tubing connections on the pump and get familiar with the back of the tank. This area in the back is used to house equipment like pumps, filters, and heaters where they're out of the way. Go ahead and mount the heater in one of the chambers on the left or right fairly low so it will stay submerged at all times. Once you have everything situated, pour in your mixed salt water and plug everything in. Since we're dealing with water, the ideal outlet has a GFI like one you'd find in your bathroom or kitchen, but you can also use a power strip with the GFI built in. At minimum, make sure you arrange the cords in a way that will cause the drips to fall off safely rather than travel down the cord to the outlet, which is called a drip loop. Pretty much every electrical item in the tank will show a quick diagram on how they suggest to do it properly in the instructions. Now that the water is circulating, we just set the water to 78 degrees by tapping the button and replace. Install our lights and the tank is set up. This literally took us less than an hour to do from start to finish and all we need to do now is build up the beneficial bacteria to start filtering our tank. You probably notice we don't have an actual filter on the tank like you might expect. That's because the filtration is primarily done on the surface of the rock and sand where beneficial bacteria populate and process excess food and fish waste for you. Really, you don't have to do anything special to maintain this type of filtration. In fact, there really isn't much you could do in a normal reef tank to prevent this bacteria from populating and filtering your tank for you. Really, it's that easy. While the bacteria would populate on its own over time, new tank owners typically aren't that patient, and there are a couple of things we can do to speed the process up in the tank. First, we use live sand, which contains live dormant bacteria. In this case, we use the Ocean Direct brand, which contains natural bacteria found in the sea. At this point, it's wise to let the tank rest overnight and heat up. In the morning, add your biospira and the tank is ready for your first fish. The biospira and live sand will provide the filtration needed to protect your fish, but it's always wise to start with something pretty hardy, like a clownfish as your first addition. After that, give your tank a month to stabilize with the lights off before adding anything new. Keeping the lights off will help reduce algae growth common with new tanks. As a general rule of thumb, I find it's wise to never more than double your fish load in a single month, meaning next month add another fish and possibly two the month after. Some of my favorite new reef for fish selections for a tank like this is standard clownfish, purple or red firefish, shrimp and goby pears, lawnmower or Midas blennies, or an orchid dotty back. Once the tank is stabilized around your fish population, you can add some interesting elements like snails, crabs, and shrimp. Nesarius and Astrea snails are popular, as well as small hermits, emerald crabs, cleaner shrimp, peppermint shrimp, and pistol shrimp. After that, some easy to keep corals as well. The lights that come with the kit are strong enough to keep some low light corals. 
As a beginner, it's also wise to select some that don't require much effort, like soft or even some LPS corals. Zoanthids, mushrooms, zoocordia, polyps, candy canes, duncans, torch, and frog spawns are excellent examples. Now that the tank is set up, there's a couple ongoing maintenance steps to keep the tank healthy. First is feeding the fish. These little buggers always look hungry, but don't let them fool you. Easy to keep fish like the ones I just mentioned only need to eat once a day at the most. Many people even feed less. When you do feed them, they only need a few pellets each, which is just a tiny pinch. This is a pretty critical point on a small tank like this. Keep in mind that while fish do need food, the primary thing that pollutes the tank is food, and it does promote algae growth. You also need to top the tank off with fresh water every couple of days. Keep in mind that while water will evaporate, the salt doesn't leave the tank, so topping off the tank with new water to compensate for evaporation should always be done with fresh water, not salt water. We recommend picking up a few jugs of reverse osmosis or distilled water from your local grocery store for this purpose. Less frequently, you'll need to clean the glass. You can use a JBJ cleaner that we included with the kit. You'll also need to change the water regularly in a small system like this, meaning every other week. Water changes are the primary method of removing broken down food and other elements which can pollute the tank over time. Water changes will also be a new reefer's primary method of replacing elements consumed by the corals in the tank. I like to do 20 to 30 percent water changes which are super easy and shouldn't take more than a few minutes. First thing is you'll want to use the small heater and pump from the package to mix and heat the salt water before doing the change. I find it easiest to take a minute or so to do this the night before I do my water change but could also be done a few hours in advance as well. For a tank this size, I'd probably do close to a five gallon water change. All you need to do is remove the water from the tank and replace with your heated freshly mixed salt water. There are a hundred ways to maintain a successful reef tank, but I can tell you something for absolute sure. If you're careful about the amount of food you put in the tank and good about your water changes, you're almost certainly going to have a lot of success and enjoy the hobby. In future episodes, we'll explore some upgrade kits most reefers would be interested in as their tank evolves and interest in the hobby grows. This video is intentionally pretty high level and provides the elements you absolutely need to know to be successful. If you have the desire to understand this at a deeper level, we have literally hundreds of other reefing videos, most of which cover a vast majority of topics related to reefing. Really anything you'd want to know in a pretty in-depth format. If this is your first time with us, hit that subscribe button because we do this every week. See you all next week with another episode of BRS TV.